Ladies and gentlemen, esteemed guests, and everyone who has joined us today in the pursuit of personal and professional development, I warmly welcome you. As we gather here, we find ourselves united by a common thread, a thread that weaves through the tapestry of our lives, coloring our experiences and shaping our destinies. This thread, often seen as a challenge, is the experience of pain. I want you to think back to a time in your life when you faced a challenge so daunting, a hurdle so high that it seemed insurmountable. Recall the sensation, the feeling that this was a mountain too steep to climb. Yet here you are today, a testament to the human spirit's resilience and ability to conquer adversity. It's essential to recognize that pain, in its many forms, is an inevitable part of our journey, but more importantly, it is temporary. Imagine pain as a traveler passing through the seasons of your life. It arrives sometimes unannounced, often unwelcome, and it sets up camp. During its stay, it tests us, pushes us, and demands more from us than we ever thought possible. But like all travelers, it moves on, leaving behind a trail of lessons, strength, and often an unrecognizable version of ourselves, stronger and more resilient than before. Now, I'm not here to tell you that pain is easy, nor am I here to diminish the struggles that each of us faces. But in my years of experience interacting with people from all walks of life, from the young entrepreneur brimming with ideas to the seasoned professional standing at a crossroads, I've seen a universal truth. This truth is that pain, no matter how severe, how deep or how long-lasting it appears, is a temporary state. It is not a permanent residence but rather a stop on our journey to greater heights. Pain can often feel like a relentless storm, battering the shores of our resolve, threatening to flood the foundations of our hopes and dreams. But remember, even the fiercest storm eventually runs out of rain. And in its wake, it leaves a landscape that has often changed, yes, but also ripe for new growth, new possibilities, and new beginnings. I want you to hold on to this thought. Pain is temporary. It may not feel like it in the moment. It may seem as though the night will never end. But the dawn always breaks, the sun always rises, bringing with it light, warmth, and the promise of a new day. The lessons pain teaches us. Let's use these experiences as stepping stones to build a path to a future where we are not defined by our pain, but rather by how we overcame it, how we use it to fuel our journey to success. In the words that follow, I will take you through the landscape of pain, its nature, its lessons, and most importantly, how we can transform it from a foe into an ally. Together, let us venture in understanding pain not as an enemy but as an integral, albeit challenging, part of our growth and development. Remember, in the grand narrative of your life, pain is but a chapter, not the entire story. Let's turn the page together and see what lies ahead as we turn this page and step into the realm of understanding pain in the context of our growth. We embark on an exploration that is both profound and transformative. It's crucial to acknowledge that growth in its true essence is not a journey marred by unbroken strides of success and ease. Rather, it is punctuated with trials, tribulations, and yes, pain. You see, the concept of growth intertwined with pain is not just a philosophical musing. It is deeply rooted in the very fabric of our existence. Think about the process of physical growth. It's often accompanied by growing pains. Similarly, our personal and professional growth is not devoid of discomfort. Pain, in its various forms, whether emotional, physical, or psychological, acts as a catalyst that propels us forward, facilitating growth in ways comfort never could. Consider the story of a butterfly emerging from its chrysalis. The struggle to break free is not an easy one. It's a fight that requires strength, endurance, and resilience. However, it's through this struggle that the butterfly gains the strength in its wings to fly. Without this painful process, the butterfly would never soar. Similarly, in our lives, the struggles we face, the pain we endure, build our strength, character, and resilience. They equip us with the wings to soar higher in our personal and professional endeavors. The lives of those who have faced adversity and emerged stronger are rich with examples. History is replete with individuals who have used their pain as a stepping stone to greatness. Think of the greatest inventors, leaders, and visionaries. Their paths were never smooth. They faced rejection, failure, and heartbreak. Yet, they didn't allow their pain to be a roadblock. Instead, they used it as a stepping stone to achieve greatness. Their pain wasn't a stopping point. It was a starting point for growth and transformation. Take the story of a young girl who faced rejection from multiple publishers for her manuscript. 
Each rejection was a sting, a moment of pain and doubt. But she persisted, believing in her story and her potential. Today, J.K. Rowling's Harry Potter series is a global phenomenon. It wasn't just her talent that led to her success, it was her ability to persevere through the pain of rejection and criticism. Now, bring this closer to our own lives. Each one of us here has faced our own set of challenges and pains. Perhaps it was a business venture that didn't take off, a career path that hit a dead end, or a personal loss that left us reeling. In those moments of pain, we are presented with two choices, to succumb or to overcome. To succumb is to allow the pain to define and diminish us. To overcome is to use the pain as a tool for growth, learning from it, and allowing it to strengthen us. This process of growing through pain is not about dismissing or belittling our struggles. It's about acknowledging them, learning from them, and then moving past them. It's about changing our narrative from, why is this happening to me, to, what can I learn from this? This shift in perspective is where growth begins. Growth through pain is also about resilience. Resilience is not a trait that we are born with. It's a muscle that we build each time we face a challenge and choose to stand up, dust ourselves off, and move forward. We strengthen this muscle the more we exercise it, the stronger it becomes. And with a strong resilience muscle, we are better equipped to handle future challenges and pains. Moreover, it's essential to understand that pain is not just a teacher, it's also a guide. It often points us in directions we would never have considered. Many times, the path we are on is comfortable, familiar, not necessarily where we are meant to be. Pain nudges us out of complacency, forcing us to explore new avenues and opportunities. It pushes us out of our comfort zones, where real growth happens. And so, as we reflect on the role of pain in our growth, let's remember that it's not the pain that defines us, but how we respond to it. It's our response to pain that shapes our character, hones our strengths, and builds our legacy. When we look back on our lives, it won't be the moments of ease and comfort that stand out. It will be the times we faced pain head-on, wrestled with it, and emerged victorious. These are the moments that define our journey and our growth. The challenges and the pains that come our way, view them not as barriers but as bridges to a stronger, more resilient, and more successful self. And as we do so, let's carry with us the unshakable belief that pain is temporary, but the growth and strength we gain from it are everlasting. Venture deeper into understanding the nature of temporary pain. This exploration is not just about recognizing pain as a transient phase, but also about learning how to distinguish between temporary discomfort and long-term suffering, and how to navigate through these waters with grace and fortitude. When we talk about the nature of temporary pain, we're discussing the inherent transience of life's challenges. It's about the understanding that life's most difficult moments, no matter how intense, are not permanent fixtures in our journey. This realization is liberating. It allows us to face adversity with a different mindset, one that acknowledges the pain but also sees beyond it to the potential for growth and renewal. To grasp this concept, consider the analogy of a sculptor chiseling a block of marble. Each strike of the chisel, no doubt, is a shock to the stone, a moment of impact that changes its shape forever. The marble, if it could feel each strike, might experience a moment of pain. But this pain is temporary. With each strike, the sculptor is shaping something beautiful, something lasting. In our lives, we are both the marble and the sculptor. The pains we experience are the strikes that shape us, and with each strike, we have the opportunity to create something more refined, more defined, and more representative of who we are meant to be. Now, let's turn our focus to differentiating temporary pain from enduring struggles. Temporary pain is like the weather. It changes, it moves, and it eventually passes. It could be the pain of failure, the sting of rejection, or the discomfort of stepping out of our comfort zone. These pains are acute, they hurt intensely, but they are not permanent states. They are the pains that, when endured and understood, lead to personal growth, new opportunities, and increased resilience. Enduring struggles, on the other hand, are different. They are more like a climate, a long-term state that can define our environment. These are deeper issues that may require a different approach, often involving long-term strategies, external help, or significant life changes. The key here is recognizing which type of pain we are dealing with so we can respond appropriately. Take a moment to consider the temporary nature of most challenges. Think back to a time when you faced a difficult situation. Perhaps at the moment, it felt all-consuming, as if the pain would never end. 
But it did. Over time, the intensity lessened, the situation changed, and you moved forward. This is the nature of most pains we encounter. They're temporary. But what makes temporary pain so significant? It is significant because it is during these phases of discomfort that we often make the most meaningful changes in our lives. It's when we're uncomfortable that we're most likely to take action, to make a change, to grow. Comfort doesn't motivate us in the same way. Comfort doesn't push us to reach new heights, and pain does. This understanding leads us to a critical realization. The way we react to pain is more important than the pain itself. Our reaction, our attitude toward these temporary challenges, is what ultimately determines their impact on our lives. Do we see pain as a setback, a roadblock, or do we see it as a teacher, a guide, a catalyst for growth? The choice is ours. Furthermore, embracing the temporary nature of pain empowers us to endure it more gracefully. It's the knowledge that, this too shall pass, that gives us the strength to persevere. It's the understanding that every painful experience is an opportunity to learn something new about ourselves, to build resilience, and to develop coping strategies that will serve us in the future. So, as we navigate through our respective journeys, remind ourselves of the impermanent nature of pain. Let's approach each challenge with a mindset that this is not a permanent state, but a moment in time that will pass. Use these moments not as reasons to despair, but as opportunities to learn, grow, and prepare ourselves for whatever lies ahead. Moving forward, the concept of resilience building through adversity is important to acknowledge. This is more than just a topic, it's a crucial life skill. It's about turning temporary pains and challenges we face into stepping stones for personal growth and inner strength. Just like a muscle that becomes stronger with exercise, our resilience intensifies each time we confront and overcome difficulties. The journey of building resilience is akin to sailing a ship through stormy seas. These storms of life, though daunting, teach us how to navigate, how to steady our ship, and how to emerge stronger with the knowledge and experience that equip us for future voyages. It's in the heart of these storms that we discover our true potential and resilience. Resilience is not something we're born with. It's forged in the fire of adversity. It's developed in those moments when we're faced with a challenge so overwhelming that giving up seems the easiest option, yet we choose to persevere. Every time we overcome an obstacle, every time we find a way to move forward despite the setbacks, we're building our resilience. This process is not about avoiding pain or adversity, but about facing them head on and using them as opportunities to become stronger and more capable. Take the example of a business leader facing a financial crisis. The situation seems bleak, the future uncertain. Yet, it's through navigating these choppy financial waters, making tough decisions, and learning from each miss. That that this leader builds resilience. The crisis becomes a crucible, transforming their approach to business and leadership. Similarly, in our personal lives, we encounter situations that test our emotional and mental fortitude. It might be the loss of a loved one, a personal failure, or a health challenge. Each of these experiences, while painful, carries within it the seeds of growth and resilience. As we work through our grief, learn from our failures, or adapt to new limitations, we're building a reservoir of strength that will help us in future challenges. Moreover, building resilience is also about developing a mindset that views challenges as opportunities. It's about adopting a perspective that sees beyond the immediate pain and focuses on the potential for growth. This mindset shift doesn't happen overnight. It requires practice, patience, and persistence. It's about training yourself to ask, what can I learn from this, instead of, why is this happening to me? This learning-oriented approach transforms the way we deal with adversity. Instead of being knocked down by challenges, we begin to see them as learning experiences. Each obstacle teaches us something new about ourselves, about others, about life. These lessons are invaluable. They cannot be taught in a classroom or read in a book. They are learned in the trenches of life, where resilience is built. One effective way to build resilience is through reflection and introspection. After facing a challenge, take the time to reflect on what happened. What did you learn? How did you grow? What strengths did you discover in yourself? This process of reflection turns experience into wisdom, pain into strength. Another key aspect of building resilience is the support system we create around ourselves. Just as a tree relies on a network of roots to stand tall and withstand storms, we need a strong support system to help us through tough times. 
The support can come from family, friends, mentors, or even professional counselors. These individuals provide us with different perspectives, advice, and the emotional support we need to persevere. Furthermore, building resilience also involves taking care of ourselves physically, mentally, and emotionally. Just like a warrior prepares for battle, we need to prepare ourselves for life's challenges. This preparation involves regular exercise, a healthy diet, adequate sleep, and practices that support our mental health, such as meditation or journaling. By taking care of ourselves, we ensure that we're in the best possible shape to face whatever comes our way. The challenges we encounter with a spirit of resilience. Let's view each difficulty as a chance to grow stronger, wiser, and more capable. The process of building resilience is ongoing. It doesn't stop after one challenge or one victory. It's a lifelong journey, one that makes us more adaptable, more robust, and more prepared for the future. As we journey further, embracing the resilience we build through overcoming adversity, we arrive at a profound realization. Pain, in its raw and unvarnished form, can be a powerful catalyst for change. It's a force that, while initially may bring discomfort and unease, ultimately has the power to transform, to push us into realms of growth and innovation that comfort and routine never could. Consider the essence of change. Change is often born from a place of discomfort, a place where staying the same becomes more painful than the risk involved in changing. Pain in this context is not just a challenge to be endured. It becomes a driving force compelling us to seek new horizons, to rethink our strategies, and to reevaluate our goals. It is in these moments of acute discomfort that we often find the impetus to make the most significant changes in our lives. Picture the entrepreneur who faces a failing business. Each day brings mounting debts, dwindling customers, and the looming threat of bankruptcy. It's an all-consuming pain, one that threatens to overwhelm. Yet it's this very pain that drives the entrepreneur to innovate, to pivot, to find a new way to save their business. Without this pain, the comfort of the status quo might have led to stagnation. With it, there's a push towards reinvention and ultimately, success. Similarly, in our personal lives, pain can be the trigger for transformative change. Consider the individual who faces a health scare. This moment of pain and fear becomes a turning point, leading to a complete overhaul in lifestyle, diet, and exercise. What was once an unassailable routine of unhealthy habits gives way to a renewed focus on health and well-being. Pain, therefore, becomes a catalyst for a positive, life-altering transformation. It's important to recognize that while pain initiates the process of change, it is our response to this pain that determines the outcome. It's about channeling the energy of our discomfort into positive action. This requires a mindset shift, a willingness to step out of our comfort zones and embrace new possibilities. It's about seeing beyond the immediate discomfort and focusing on the potential for something better on the other side. Change spurred by pain is not about a blind leap into the unknown. It's a thoughtful, deliberate process of exploring new options, learning new skills, and opening ourselves up to new experiences. It's about taking the lessons learned from our painful experiences and using them to build a better, stronger, and more fulfilling future. Also, consider the role of resilience in this process. The resilience we've built through our past experiences of adversity becomes a critical asset when navigating change. It gives us the strength to endure the uncertainties and challenges that come with any significant change. It provides a foundation of inner strength that we can rely on when things get tough. Moreover, pain as a catalyst for change doesn't just apply to individuals. It applies to societies and organizations as well. History is filled with examples of societal pain leading to significant reforms and advancements. It's often in the aftermath of crisis and conflict that we see the most profound societal changes, whether it's in the form of new laws, new movements, or new ways of thinking. View the pains and challenges we encounter not as obstacles but as opportunities, opportunities to reassess, to reinvent, and to rejuvenate. Approach change not with fear and apprehension but with excitement and optimism for what lies ahead. Navigating through painful experiences is like steering a ship through a treacherous storm. It's about understanding the nature of the storm, preparing for it, and knowing that eventually calm waters will appear on the horizon. Just as a seasoned sailor learns to read the winds and waves, we too can learn to navigate through the turbulent waters of pain and emerge stronger and wiser. First, acknowledge a simple truth. Pain in its various forms is an inevitable part of our lives. 
It's a universal experience, one that touches every life at some point. But while pain is inevitable, suffering is optional. It's not the pain itself that causes the most distress. It's how we perceive and respond to it. Our mindset, our approach to these experiences, can make all the difference. One of the first steps in navigating through painful experiences is acceptance. Acceptance does not mean resignation or giving up. Rather, it's about acknowledging reality as it is, not as we wish it to be. It's understanding that some things are beyond our control. This acceptance allows us to stop fighting against the inevitable and start focusing on what we can do. It opens up a space for us to deal with our situation more constructively. Next comes the phase of understanding. This involves taking a step back and looking at the situation objectively. Ask yourself, what can I learn from this? How can this experience help me grow? Every challenge carries a lesson. It's through understanding these lessons that we find meaning in our pain. And this meaning helps us to bear the burden more easily. Another vital aspect of navigating through pain is self-care. Often, in the midst of dealing with painful experiences, we neglect our own needs. However, taking care of our physical, emotional, and mental well-being is crucial during these times. Engaging in activities that nourish and rejuvenate us, such as exercise, meditation, or spending time in nature, can provide the strength and resilience needed to deal with our challenges. But it's also important to seek support when navigating through pain. Just as a ship in a storm may send out a distress signal, we too can reach out for help. This support can come in many forms, a trusted friend, a family member, a professional counselor. Sharing our burden can lighten it, and the perspectives and guidance of others can provide invaluable assistance in finding our way. Through developing a problem-solving mindset, we can navigate through pain more effectively. Instead of dwelling on the problem, focus on finding solutions. Break down the situation into manageable parts and tackle each part systematically. This proactive approach empowers us to take control where we can and leads to a sense of accomplishment and progress. Patience plays a critical role in this journey as well. The path through pain is rarely linear. There will be setbacks and detours. It's important to be patient with ourselves in the process. Healing and growth take time, and rushing through or forcing outcomes can lead to frustration and exhaustion. An often overlooked but powerful tool in navigating through pain is gratitude. Even in the darkest of times, there are things to be grateful for. Focusing on these can shift our perspective, provide a sense of peace and hope, and remind us of the good that still exists in our lives. Maintaining a sense of hope is essential. Hope acts like a beacon guiding us through the darkness. It's the belief that things can and will get better. This hope is not based on wishful thinking but on the understanding that pain is temporary and that we have the strength and resources to get through it. Understanding that navigating through pain is not merely an act of endurance but also an opportunity for profound growth, we arrive at an enlightening realization. This realization is that there is indeed a bright side of pain. It might seem counterintuitive to associate pain with anything positive, yet it is in the crucible of our challenges and discomforts that some of those valuable life lessons are forged. Imagine for a moment a gardener in the early stages of spring. The soil is being turned, seeds are being planted, and the entire scene is one of upheaval and transformation. To the untrained eye, it might look chaotic, even destructive, but we know that this process, as arduous as it seems, leads to a bloom of vibrant flowers and lush greenery. Similarly, the pains and trials we endure are like the turning of the soil in our lives. They unsettle us, yes, but they also prepare us for growth, for blooming into our fullest potential. One of the brightest sides of pain is the development of empathy and compassion. When we experience pain, we gain a deeper understanding of what it means to struggle, to feel lost, or to face adversity. This understanding fosters a profound sense of empathy towards others going through similar experiences. It breaks down the walls of isolation and ego, reminding us of our shared human experience. Furthermore, pain often brings clarity and perspective. In the midst of our busiest days, it's easy to lose sight of what truly matters. Pain has a way of cutting through the noise, bringing into sharp focus the things that are genuinely important. It reminds us of the value of health, the importance of relationships, and the preciousness of time. This clarity can lead to a re-evaluation of priorities, often steering us towards a more fulfilling path. Another bright side of pain is the strength and resilience that it builds within us. Like a tree that withstands storm after storm, 
Our roots grow deeper, our trunks sturdier, and under our branches more robust. We emerge from painful experiences not weakened but stronger, more resilient, and more adaptable. This strength is not just for ourselves. It becomes a source of support and inspiration for others. Pain also has the potential to be a powerful motivator for change and innovation. Throughout history, some of the greatest advancements and achievements have been born from a place of discomfort or dissatisfaction. Pain pushes us to challenge the status quo, to question, to innovate, and to find better ways of doing things. In essence, the bright side of pain lies in its transformative power. It is a teacher like no other, imparting lessons of empathy, clarity, strength, and motivation. It reshapes our lives not by diminishing us but by expanding our horizons, deepening our understanding, and enriching our connections. It becomes clear that our journey through understanding pain is not just an intellectual exercise. Rather, it's a call to action, a beckoning to apply these insights to our everyday lives. The knowledge we've gained about pain, its temporary nature, and its role as a catalyst for growth and change set the stage for a transformative path ahead. Consider this moment as a starting point, a springboard into a future where we are no longer at the mercy of our pains and challenges but are masters of them. It's a future where each of us, armed with resilience, understanding, and a proactive mindset, can turn the tides of our personal and professional lives for the better. The first step in this transformative journey is to adopt a mindset of empowerment. Instead of viewing pain as a formidable enemy, see it as a challenge to be met with courage, intelligence, and strategy. It's about shifting our perspective from a passive, why is this happening to me, to an active, what can I do about this? This change in mindset is the key that unlocks the potential within each painful experience to be a source of growth and learning. Commit to being architects of our own destiny. We've seen how pain can be a catalyst for change, driving us to reevaluate, adapt, and innovate. Awareness is power. When faced with challenges, let's ask ourselves, how can this situation spur me to grow? What new paths could I explore? What changes could I implement? This is not about finding immediate solutions. It's about setting a direction for continuous growth and improvement. Moreover, let's not forget. The importance of resilience cannot be overstated. This resilience isn't a trait that some are born with and others are not. It's a skill that we can all develop. It's forged in the fires of adversity, strengthened with each challenge we overcome. Each of us has an inner strength far greater than we often realize. Let's pledge to nurture and build this resilience, knowing that it will be our most trusted companion in times of trial. Recognize the power of connection and empathy. Our shared experiences of pain bind us in a common human story. By reaching out, sharing our stories, and supporting each other, we not only lighten our own burdens but also help others on their journey. Be there for one another, offering a listening ear, a word of encouragement, or a helping hand. Step forward with a spirit of optimism and hope. Pain, no matter how intense or daunting, is temporary. Beyond every night is the promise of a new dawn. Let's hold on to this hope as we navigate through life's challenges. Let's remember that every experience, especially the painful ones, is an opportunity for growth, learning, and ultimate success. As we conclude, I invite you to embrace this call to action. Let's take the insights and lessons we've gathered and apply them to our lives with determination and enthusiasm. Remember, in the symphony of your life, you are the composer. Each challenge, each pain, is a note that contributes to the beauty of the melody. Let's compose a masterpiece of resilience, growth, and success. The path ahead is ours to walk, and though filled with challenges, it is replete with opportunities for greatness. Let's begin that journey today. One of my seminar participants shared this insight. He said money is like food. When you have enough of it, you don't think about it at all. But when you're deprived of it for any period of time, you think of nothing else. More people are achieving financial independence and becoming self-made millionaires today at a faster rate than ever before. A great majority of self-made millionaires and even billionaires are first-generation success stories. This means they started their working lives with little or nothing and earned it all from scratch. The fact that so many hundreds of thousands and millions of other people have gone from rags to riches in a single generation is ample proof that you can do it as well. You only need to learn how. It's really quite simple to become a self-made millionaire. If you simply save $100 per month, year in and year out, from the age of 20 to 65, 
and invest that money in a well-managed mutual fund invested in the American stock market, you would earn an average of 10.8% per annum on your investment. At that rate, $100 per month would be worth more than $1.2 million when you retire. The most successful people in every society are those with a long-term perspective. They develop a long-term horizon and think and plan 10, 20, and even 40 years into the future. They then organize their daily and weekly activities in such a way that everything they do is consistent with the long-term goals they want to achieve. This is especially true with regard to achieving financial independence. You and everyone else have a series of goals, either clear or fuzzy. Your values are organized in a hierarchy, each of your goals ranked consciously or unconsciously from your most important to your least important. The reason that people do not achieve financial independence is that although it is a goal, it is not a primary goal. It is merely one of many goals that they think about from time to time. When it comes time to act or spend, there are other goals for immediate pleasure and gratification, for example, take precedence. It's only when you take the goal of financial independence and move it right up to the top of your hierarchy of values that you begin to get your financial life under control. Remember the great principle. You become what you think about most of the time. In thousands of interviews, researchers have discovered that self-made millionaires in the area of money think about financial independence most of the time. They organize their entire lives around saving and accumulating. They think continually about how they can earn or acquire more and better invest and deploy their savings. The fact is you are not going to win the lottery. Unfortunately, there is no distant relative who is going to die and leave you a lot of money. You're not going to discover gold or make a lucky hit in the stock market. The only way that you're going to achieve financial independence is with a long-term perspective by saving and investing your money month after month and year after year until you have enough that you never had to worry about money again. For most people, money means freedom, one of the highest of all human values. It means the ability to be and do what you want and to buy the things you need without worrying about the cost. Freedom is a powerful driving force that has determined the course of human history. Is freedom one of your values? For many people, some of the values associated with money are security, independence, success, status, adventure, and even love, especially the love and respect of others. So, what are your personal values with regard to money? Here's an important point. If you have negative values with regard to money, these values can sabotage you throughout your entire life. One of the smartest things that you can do for the rest of your life is to admire, respect, and look up to people who have achieved financial success. This is because you always move in the direction of that which you most admire and respect. The more you admire and respect financial success, the more likely you are to do the same things that financially successful people do. Eventually, you'll become the kind of person who achieves financial success yourself. Imagine that your financial life was perfect in every respect. Create a clear mental picture of your distant financial future as if your every financial dream had been realized. What does it look like? How much would you like to be worth when you retire or stop working? What kind of lifestyle would you like to have at that time? How much will you have to save and invest every month, every year, to reach your long-term financial goals? These are questions that most people seldom ask or answer. Imagine that you have no limitations on your long-term ability to achieve financial independence. Imagine that you have all the time and all the resources that you require, all the knowledge, and all the experience you need. Imagine that you have all the contacts and all the opportunities you could ask for. If you could design your financial life to be perfect in every way, with no limitations, what would it look like? Imagine that you have finally achieved a net worth of $10 million. What would you do? How would you change your life if you were completely independent financially? Make up a dream list of every single thing you would want in your life, tangible and intangible, if you had all the money you would ever need. The greater clarity you have regarding your long-term financial future, the faster you will attract the people and resources that you will need to achieve it into your life, and the more rapidly you will realize your vision. In general, you should have four financial goals. First, you want to earn as much as you can. Second, you want to spend as little as you can. Third, you want to save and invest as much as possible. And fourth, you want to protect yourself against unexpected reversals and lawsuits. The achievement of each of these goals is very much under your control. Perhaps the best measure you can use if financial independence is your goal is to determine how much money you will need each month, each year, to live comfortably, 
and then calculate how long you could sustain your current lifestyle and your current savings. This number is called your run rate or your burn rate. This is a calculation of how long you can survive with what you have accumulated up to now. This is the best measure of your overall financial health. This is a great focal point. Set clear financial goals and targets for each part of your financial life, both for the short term and for the long term. Examine every expenditure in your life and look for ways to reduce your monthly living costs. Set a goal to cut your expenses by 10 or 20 percent over the next 90 days. Make cost control and cost cutting a regular part of your life, no matter how much you earn. Since you become what you think about most of the time, the more time you spend thinking about your money, the better you will become in terms of managing it. The first knowledge that you will require to achieve financial independence is the knowledge of exactly how much you are earning today, how much you are spending each month, and how much you are worth right now. You should keep a list of every dollar you spend and analyze your list regularly. The more attention you pay to your day-to-day -day spending, the smarter and more aware you will become regarding the amount of money flowing through your fingers. Dot. Here's a rule that will virtually guarantee that you become wealthy over the course of your working lifetime. Save and invest 50% of any increase that you earn in your salary or compensation for the rest of your career. You can still spend the other 50% of the increase on improving your standard of living, but resolve today to save half of every increase for the rest of your career. This discipline alone will assure that you achieve financial independence, and probably several years before you expect. Apply the 80 20 rule to your job every day. Identify the 20% of your tasks that account for 80% of the value of everything you do. Resolve to focus more and more of your attention on becoming better and better at those few activities that are worth more than all the rest. There are certain habits and behaviors that lead inevitably to financial success. The first and most important habit is for you to pay yourself first. As George Clayson wrote in his classic book, The Richest Man in Babylon, a part of all you earn is yours to keep. Pay yourself first, off the top. Your goal is to eventually save 10 to 20 percent of your income throughout your life. Your aim should be to put this amount away regularly, to invest it with experts, and to let it grow over time. If you cannot afford to save 10 percent of your income, begin by saving 1 percent of your income. Begin saving and investing even before you pay off your debts. Begin putting money away before you pay down the amounts that you owe. This is very important. By developing the habit of saving a certain percentage of what you earn off the top of every single paycheck, you will eventually change your entire attitude towards yourself and money. The most important habit you can develop to achieve financial independence is the habit of frugality. Carefully consider every expense before you make it. If possible, delay a large purchase for a day, a week, a month, or even longer. Take that time to think about it before you commit. Perhaps the most helpful habit of all is for you to learn to enjoy the very act of saving and investing. When you begin to look forward to every opportunity to put money away, you change your entire attitude toward money and investments. You begin to get tremendous pleasure and satisfaction from seeing your savings and investments grow over time. There are four activities that you should engage in every single day to guarantee that you achieve financial independence. The first is to carefully evaluate every expenditure before you make it. Delay every expenditure that you possibly can. Put it off until later, if you make it at all. The second thing that you should do is to set clear goals and targets for the amounts that you intend to earn and keep. Measure your results against these targets every week and every month. What gets measured gets done. The third activity is for you to look for ways to reduce your monthly expenditures and instead save the money. Cut out all non-essential expenses. Keep asking yourself, do I really need this? And if you don't, don't buy it or don't spend it. Set it as a goal to reduce your monthly cost of living by as much as you can, as quickly as possible. Remember, every dollar that you can save from your monthly expenses is an additional dollar that you can put into your financial freedom account. The fourth activity is for you to take every opportunity that you possibly can to increase your value, to increase your earning ability. Look for ways to upgrade your knowledge and skills. Concentrate on getting better at those activities that contribute the greatest value to yourself and your company. Become totally focused on making more and saving more every single day. Financial success is predictable. It has never been more possible for you to earn and keep more money than it is today. There are hundreds of thousands and even millions of self-made millionaires, 
all of whom started with nothing and who began using the practices and processes described in this session. Your job is to become one of them. Begin today.